as we begin to pray I will rebuke the spirit of poverty the spirit of poverty is a spirit that is assigned to individuals the assignment watch this the assignment of the spirit of poverty is to study the extent of your ignorance and to build systems around your ignorance that stop you from making financial progress let me repeat the assignment of the spirit of poverty is to study the level of your ignorance the bible says no weapon fashioned against us weapons are fashioned are we together so when the devil comes sending the spirit of poverty he does not just attack because poverty like prosperity is is an effect it's not a cause so it doesn't make sense to say Satan stop finances to come to you. It's a, ref it's a reaction. What he does is to study your whole financial understanding or otherwise. And he now begins to build systems either through pride or through laziness. Are we together? Or stopping you from having strategic relationships. Everything that can be designed to stop you from accessing the keys that bring you out that is the assignment of the spirit of poverty it now becomes a stronghold upon your mind and upon your destiny making the word of god of non-effect so when you are bringing deliverance to an individual preaching deliverance what you are doing is opening their eyes to see but that influence is still there this is where the assignment of the power of god comes to dislodge that spirit influence this is what you call generational causes this is what you call familiar spirits they and you know because listen spirits don't die so you can think that because your father is 70 80 or you are 40 30 20 those spirits do not feel the effect of the longevity of time they stay there and they remain until a savior arises i repeat until a savior arises not until time passes and could it be that you are that savior whilst you are listening to me thank god that you still have a chance to make this right and for some of you who are fortunate to still have your loved ones god is giving you an opportunity right now that you can correct a lot of things there are many of you who have never supported the cause of the kingdom with your finances not because you do not want to it is not even there there are many pastors today burdened with all kinds of financial yokes the discussion largely is money, not giving you room to serve God with the dignity of integrity. Hallelujah. Statistics tell us that the top three reasons why divorce happens in marriage is number one, financial issues. Are we together? Number two, issues between spouse and then number three, external factors. Statistic tells us that these are the top three reasons. Number one, money and financial issues. And don't say it does not matter. There are people right now who have not received their salaries for a few months. And their children are back home. When others are going to school, they will not go. The fact that those children cannot make progress already begins to plant complex in them ready tools for the spirit of poverty to come he will now start suggesting lifestyles and suggesting all kinds of things are we together there are some of us right now when you started your walk with god you chose the path of integrity and character and right now you look back and and, and you are not even happy about what is happening because your hands have been mad in all kinds of wrong things all credited to the absence of finance but we are going to pray the Lord has brought us this word and it's time for you to be free. If you believe that, shout a loud amen. amen. This is my assignment and I will do it with diligence. I will pray, I will speak over your life and see to it that no weapon fashioned against you. It is not the economy that controls your resources. It is your understanding. It is these forces at work in you. Ladies and gentlemen, government will come and go. The great recession once happened in the globe. Every kind of, there are circles of recession that will always happen. You will always find corrupt leaders. You will find honest leaders. You will find godly leaders. You will find satanic leaders interchange hands through the years. Believing that a government will magically come and make you prosperous is being ignorant. Your prosperity is defined by the sum total 
of your understanding. Are we together? Daniel was a, a believer in the God of heaven who reigned through the dispensation about, of about four to seven kings. Bible history tells us none of those kings could take him out of relevance because he found the key. He was not there to look for money, yet he never lacked. Regardless the government, he was still prosperous. Hallelujah. Give your destiny a chance to be blessed. And let me wrap up by saying this. The purpose of financial blessings like I have taught you, money has a threefold assignment in the life of the believer. Number one, financial resources empower you to live a comfortable life. Never forget that. You will never live a comfortable life in poverty. And by the way, poverty does not glorify God. The Bible says, if you have been evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Ghost to them that ask him? God will not use poverty and twist your hand and curse your children to teach you a lesson there are more superior ways to guide you and teach you a lesson and build you and train you are we together now number two the second assignment of wealth prosperity and abundance listen carefully is for kingdom advance so that you can make your contribution as far as supplying financial resources for kingdom activities is concerned the work of the Lord does not just depend on anointing and grace and doctrine. It depends on the availability of financial resources communicated from and through willing hearts who are prosperous. That means the more people prosper genuinely, the more resources can be made available for, financial, for, for kingdom activities. And then number three, the last purpose of wealth and re financial resources is to empower you so that you can be a blessing to a dying world in a definite and a practical way. Listen carefully. Remember that you are not just empowered just for Christians alone. There are many people dying out there. There is a world that needs to see an extension of the love of Jesus beyond prejudices of religion and all of that. And financial prosperity empowers you to be a blessing. Unfortunately, unbelievers are doing this by far better than believers. By far better than believers. You look at the ratio of charity organizations constructively e em empowering the poor, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked. What Jesus said, if you do it, is called pure religion. Those who have not professed Jesus are the ones doing it by far better than believers. And we have a role to play as far as making our contribution is concerned. This is the threefold purpose of wealth for a believer. Anything outside this, you are pushing yourself to the corridors of waste, regret, and compromise. Can we pray now? Please rise up on your feet. There are just three prayer points we are going to pray, and I speak over your life. The first prayer point is you are going to ask for grace. Please make sure you participate in the prayer. The grace to imbibe this that you have learned in your spirit so that it works for you. Please lift your voice and begin to talk to the Lord everywhere, outside, connecting online. Lift your voice and begin to pray. The Bible says, now that you know these things, it says, happy are you if you do them. Now that you know these things, happy are you if you do them now that ye know these things happy are you if you do them in the name of jesus someone is praying open up your heart and cry to the god of heaven i declare that i am a doer of the word the things that make for poverty i obtain grace to make quality decisions that close these doors from my life close these doors from my church close these doors from my business i am ready to be empowered the problem is not the recession the problem is not the 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 the, the, the economy of the nations hallelujah number two i'd like you to pray 
that the spirit of poverty that spirit that has taken advantage of ignorance or incomplete knowledge and is praying over your finances praying over your family's finances i like you to decree and declare that by the blood of the eternal covenant it stops from this night is someone praying open your mouth and pray do not allow yourself continue in lack and want it is not the will of god and it is totally unnecessary totally unnecessary not with the abundance of knowledge that you have access to someone pray i rebuke the spirit of poverty whether it has been generational in the name of jesus we decree and declare you will not find a place in my life are you praying you will not find a place in my children pray you will not find a place in my spouse not in my company not in the ministry god has given someone is praying in the name of jesus christ all the decisions that are pro poverty i come against you and the spirit that influences my attitude the spirit that influences my decisions praying upon my ignorance the lord rebuke you in the name of jesus hallelujah the final prayer point and then it will be my turn to pray for you i'd like you to pray there is the power to get wealth yes there is there truly is the power to get wealth please do not take serious anybody who tells you there is no anointing that prospers people there is the power to get wealth. Let God be true and all men liars. You are going to pray. Father, I've been imparted, I've been anointed before, but the power to get wealth, let it rest upon my life now. Open your mouth and pray. The power to get wealth. God is able to empower men. He's able to provide a supernatural engracing upon your spirit and your mind that causes you to be extraordinary in producing results results that make you extremely valuable results that attracts resources to you results that connects you to the heart of men and help us someone pray someone pray you are about to receive in the name of jesus in the name of jesus let me speak over your life now father in the name of jesus i decree and declare you gave me this instruction to bring this prophetic word as a deliverance in the name of jesus i decree and declare that mantle and that grace that makes for wealth that took ordinary people in scripture and even ordinary people in our day to day and has exalted them bringing beauty for ashes and joy for mourning i decree and declare may that grace rest upon you now may that grace rest upon you now rest upon your business rest upon your ministry rest upon your household rest upon your career in the name of jesus christ by reason of this grace i speak prophetically over you that everything that represents the shame and the reproach connected to poverty i declare that it dies over your life now every family here that has never experienced genuine prosperity is always from poverty to poverty you saw those before you you saw your parents some of you right now and you're about transferring the same to your children in the name of jesus may this anointing intercept that progression intercept that progression in the name of jesus christ the Bible says, and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. It was not always so. Every failed business here, every dead or dying business, I decree and declare, may help us show up and lift you back. May help us show up and lift you back. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. One of the assignments of the spirit of poverty, I will discuss that when we take the financial series proper. 
but one of the assignments of the spirit of poverty please listen to me is to make you run into debt one of the major strategies of crippling your finances is to make you get into debt now i know from an economic standpoint there is good debt there's bad debt they say there is good debt that can be used as a leverage you know and bad debt for fueling consumption i'm not downplaying your knowledge that is important according to your faith but let me tell you the most superior way is to not be in debt for the bible says oh no man nothing but love it is a possibility according to your faith you believe in debt, no problem. The wisdom to manage whatever you receive. Now, I'm speaking largely personally. I know that corporately, many times people would need help from institutions to execute large projects. That is corporate. I'm talking about there is no reason why you should get into debt personally. It's a terrible thing. Because let me tell you what happens. This spirit constrains you and then it forces you to start borrowing money until it becomes an addiction. And every time you borrow money, it will schedule activities to make sure that money was never used for the reason why it was borrowed. So interest begins to pile up while there is no achievement that should bring you that profit. There are many churches today that are in debt. There are many supposed wealthy people today that are in debt there are many you are not free if you are in debt because it sustains the ability to stop you from sleeping the moment you have abundance plus time plus peace you are truly wealthy these three things must happen for wealth to be established if the only thing you have is abundance of financial resources even if you have systems the goal of these systems is to allow you the time and then peace resources time peace that is kingdom wealth that is true financial dominion that tripartite coexistence of wealth time and peace because these are the three most expensive commodities if you lose time and peace whatever else you got by losing them was a bad bargain are we together praise the name of the lord so the spirit of poverty has made many of us, some of us right now probably are in debt of thousands, millions, billions, and you want to get into more. No. Every time people got into debt from scripture, it was the prophetic that brought them out. The prophetic is mandated with the responsibility of rescue, particularly from financial debt. Alas, master, it was borrowed. It was prophecy that brought it out. The woman who was owing you know, the prophet who died and left his wife in debt, the prophet said, go and borrow vessels, not oil. To borrow means to plead from people, just bring it. And the Bible says he filled it and he said, go and sell it. And now give, you know, pay off your debt and leave off the rest. The first thing the prophet told the woman to do when you are blessed is pay off your debt. Because you can't live in peace when you have debt. That was the prophet's recommendation. Are we together? So I want to pray for you. If you are in any kind of financial situation of debt, whether personally, as a family, or corporately, in the name of Jesus, please believe this prophecy. Between now and December 2023, I prophesy upon you, come out of that debt. Come out of that financial situation. Come out of that financial situation. In the name of Jesus Christ. How will it happen, Apostle? Very simple. The ministry of men. It, there is no magic as to how people come out of debt. It is always the ministry of men. God will send men disguised as systems, disguised as relationships. It is yours to now discern and be ready when it comes. You don't come out of debt by superstition. When prophecy is released, as it was over Samaria, the next thing was men. Even if they are lepers, they will be the ones to use to rescue Samaria. Every time prophecy comes, start paying attention to men. They will come with business ideas. They will come with superior projects. They will come with their well wishes just to bail you out. A show of kindness. Or they will come, somebody can just bless you. 
Oh, apostle, I'm owing 30 million. And God gives someone an instruction. I will not give you money, but I give you one of my properties as a gift. You value that property and they say it's 80 million. You are out of debt already. It's up to you now. Let me tell you one of the major ways that God brings people out of debt is through the power of land and its resources. Because it is very difficult for somebody to come and give you one million, but he can give you a slice of the earth. And the Bible says, out of the earth comes increase. He says the increase of the earth is for all. He never said the increase of a company. So if everywhere runs to you, go to the earth for your portion. The earth has a portion for all men. This is a strategy. I'm not, I'm not foolish as you hear me talk to you. The earth is a universal bailout system that God uses to bring men out of financial troubles. The increase of the earth is for all, it says. That means if they reject you, if you are in debt, there's no guarantee that the increase in the bank, you have a share there. But this earth is a universal standpoint. The moment you are in debt, trust God to use the power of the earth and its fullness as a mystery to bail you out. Hmm. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, let the power to prosper the engracing that can rest on men and women and program them for extraordinary success. I declare by the privilege of this apostolic and prophetic mantle, receive it right now. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. Be delivered from every financial captivity. Hear me. What your father could not do, what your mother could not do, for some of you, what has never been done before you, I empower you by this anointing. Go and do it. Extraordinary results in business, extraordinary results in ministry, in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, many of you will come and stand here and begin to testify of strange financial doors in the name of Jesus Christ. And by this anointing, everybody mandated to help you, especially in this month, in this month of April, leave May, leave June, we're talking April. I don't know where they are, but I can call them by prophecy. In the name of Jesus Christ, the one who gave power to men, I declare this week that is coming, I stand by this mantle. I call for strange helpers, strange helpers, strange lifters. In the name of Jesus Christ. That by reason of this that you have heard, some of you, by God, you will step into prepared blessings. You will be sitting down. Someone will call you and give you a car. Call you and give you a house. I'm telling you, call you and give you a job. He has trained you so his hands will not be restrained in blessing you. There are some of you who are in ministry. God will give people instructions and say they should come and hold your hands and see to it that you never go down again. Every family struggling financially, whether to pay school fees, to pay rent, to complete building projects, or maybe to fund projects that are ongoing in the name of Jesus this week, may Ebenezer, the helper of men, may he arise and surprise you. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Yeah.